So why on earth did Jesus on the cross say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If Jesus is God, what on earth was he doing? And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, so let's get started. So before we get into today's video, I'm really curious. Let me know in the comment section below why you think Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This is a common question that loads of people have. Jesus on the cross, one of the things he says, one of the last things he says is, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And just for, um, for personal reference sake, you can read this in Matthew 27 verse 47 and Mark 15 verse 34 are the two Gospels that basically have those specific words um, um, annotated or those specific words written down, okay? And that poses a problem for loads of skeptics and loads of people and they say, hold on, if Jesus is God, why on earth was he saying, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me, etc. And what I want to talk about in this video is something that at the time Jesus expected them to know, okay? So we're going to basically talk, so we're basically going to walk through what this actually means. And at that point, you should realize exactly what Jesus was doing here. Okay. So most people don't have a really firm understanding of the Bible. Okay. That might include you if you're watching this video as well. And I'm not saying that to um, downgrade you or insult you or anything like that. I'm just pointing out a clear fact because most people that have read their Bible even a little bit, we we'll know exactly what Jesus was doing here. So let's get into it, okay? So the really thing that unravels all of this stuff right here and starts to make all of this stuff make sense is a scripture that was written thousands of years before Jesus was born, okay? In the book of Psalms, okay? And if you understand what's going on in the book of Psalms, you understand exactly what Jesus was doing here, okay? He wasn't saying, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Because he wasn't good. Or he just realized at that point, oh, I'm in trouble now. I'm actually just a man, okay? He was casting people's minds back, which they should have known as Israelites, as people that understood the scriptures. Psalms 22. And what we're going to do is, that's a, a text that was written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. But what you'll notice in that chapter is, you have sort of like someone watching. It's sort of like one of the disciples, okay, writing about what happened at Jesus on the cross, but someone doing it thousands of years before Jesus was even born, okay? So when you go to Psalms 22, and I recommend you do it, the first thing you're going to see, and I'll put all of these up for you, okay? The very first verse, verse 1, do you want to take a wild guess what it says? Okay, verse 1 says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Okay, so anyone reading the New Testament with even a little bit of understanding about the Old Testament, when they saw Jesus saying this, one of the first things, and this is what Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is going to come and bring all things back to your remembrance. So they, them at the time, the, the Israelites, that were fighting against him should have known better okay and us today we have the benefit of the whole bible together and we have the holy spirit um, living in us that can bring these things back to our remembrance he was highlighting psalms 22 on the cross okay why was he highlighting psalms 22 on the cross because if they've cast their mind back to psalms 22 what was actually happening at that point him on the cross would have actually made a lot of sense okay so the first thing we want to identify from Psalm 22, apart from verse 1, which kind of gives the cat, gives the cat out of the bag, is verse 6 in Psalms 22. And it reads, But I, a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. Okay? And even a cross-reference for that is Isaiah 53, verse 3, which... What we're reading in verse 6 in Psalms 22 is very, very synonymous with another, the Messiah would die, okay? So you put Psalms 22 and Isaiah 53 together, all of this stuff makes sense. So verse 6 in Psalms 22 alludes to Isaiah 53 verse 3, which is very similar. Next we go on to verse 7 to 8 of Psalms 22, and look what it says. It says, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. 
they shoot out the lip, they shake their head. He trusted on the Lord, he will deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Okay? This is what it says in Psalms 22. And look what it says, okay, comparing verse 7 and 8 in Psalms 22 to Matthew 27, verse 39 to 44, okay. Mark 15, verse 29 to 32. And Luke 23, verse 35 and 37. Compare Psalms 22, verse 7 to 8. We have Matthew 27, 39 to 44, Mark 15, 29 to 32, and Luke 23, verse 35 and 37. And see if you see anything synonymous, okay? The next thing we're going to highlight here, we see verse 16, okay? What does verse 16 of Psalm 22 say? It says, For dogs have compassed me, okay? Who was around him? The Romans, okay? Gentiles, which is one way Gentiles are referenced as dogs in the scripture. Look what he says. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and feet. Okay? They pierced my hands and my feet. How did they do that? With the cross. Okay? They pierced my hands and feet. When you start to identify that Psalms 22 was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you can start to see how this all makes sense, can't you? How he was alluding back to Psalms 22 because everything is that is written in here, okay? And I advise you, read the whole of Psalm 22, okay? And see what other comparisons you can draw out. But he's rejected of the people, which is synonymous with Isaiah 53, another key scripture about the Messiah, okay? Um, they mock him. Compare those scriptures there in Matthew 27, 39, 24, Mark 15, 29 to 32, Luke 23, verse 35 and 37. They pierce his hands and his feet. We already know crucifixion, hands and feet. Okay. Crucifixion didn't even exist and this at this point when the book of Psalms was written. So that's another thing, okay? Now we get to verse 18, and look what verse 18 says. It says, They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. Okay. And let's look at this, okay? So verse 18 in Psalm 22 talks about how they basically gamble, okay, for his garments and his vesture. Compare verse 18 with Mark 15, verse 24, okay, Luke 23, Verse 34. Let's get John on here. John 19, verse 23 to 24. And Matthew 27, excuse me, verse 35. Okay. Now, what we have here is Matthew 27 to verse 47 and Mark 15 verse 34 where Jesus says these famous words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Okay? And what he was getting them to do and what he was getting you to do was to know your Bible. Because if you knew Psalms 22 verse, 20, 22 verse 1 which starts, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Anyone who's read these two scriptures, any of these three scriptures, okay, either this and this or this and this, how can you not draw the conclusion, okay, if you're reading this stuff with an honest heart? And once you know that and you know the book of Psalms was written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was even born, it's talking about how he's rejected, okay, rejected by the people. We know Jesus was rejected by the people. It talks about how they mock him. 
mocked by the people. It talks about how they pierced his hands and his feet. Crucifixion. Okay? And it wasn't even invented here. And we wrap up here talking about how in verse 18 of Psalm 22, how they parted his garments by lots. Okay? Gambled. And all of this stuff, you put it together and you see exactly why he was pointing to Psalm why he said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Okay? Because he expected you to know. Okay? Now, this is really interesting because this is one thing you see through the scriptures. Okay? Jesus holds you accountable. He expects you to know these things. Now, if you watch this point in the video, you know exactly why he said this. Okay? And the question for you, if you're one of these people watching this that's a naysayer and doesn't believe in the Bible and doesn't believe in the scripture, now you've seen that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, before Jesus was even born, this scripture was written in place, which symbolizes and tells you all the information, the key information about Jesus' death. Okay? What are you going to do about it? Okay, my encouragement to you is to jump in the Bible and start finding out all of the other things you have in your mind that think, why did this happen or why did that happen? And there's an answer for it. Okay, and once you get the answer to all of these things, okay, the next thing you're going to need to do is, if you're not ready to do that at this point in time, is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Why? Because He was rejected for you. Okay, He was mocked for you mocked even more by gambling his garments for you okay and he ultimately died and was crucified for you okay so that you could be right in the sight of the lord okay in the sight of god and you wouldn't ever have to enter a place like the lake of fire as we know as hell okay so at this point i'm going to proposition you and say you know what if you believe in your heart that yes you are a sinner and you're in need of a savior this is the saviour that you need, okay? All you need to do is believe. That's it. Believe that your sins were paid for on this cross, okay, thousands of years ago. And you don't have to do anything else, okay? The sin that you commit before and in the future has been paid for by Jesus on the cross, okay? It doesn't mean just because that happens that you just... You should go and live a life of sin. Okay, Paul says you shouldn't do that. But just understand that this penalty was paid already and you can accept it and be free of the damnation to come for the devil and his angels and everyone else that won't accept this free gift Okay, um, that Jesus did. So on that note, this is why Jesus was saying on the cross, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He was pointing to Psalms 22 verse 1, which is in the Old Testament, which the Israelites at, the day, at that day should have known. And if they did know, they would have thought about all of these different things that he was saying in this, um, in Psalms 22, which basically is literally like a gospel account, okay? You could put this next to Mark or Matthew and feel like you're reading a first-hand account written at the time, okay? So on that note, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below this video. Let me know what you think, okay? Let me know what you think about him saying this and this being written in Psalm 22, hundreds of years before and all of the stuff it talks about in the scriptures, which are mind-boggling. Even to this day, every time I go through the stuff like this, I think to myself, God, you couldn't even be more clearer, okay? So on that note, thanks and take care and I'll see you on the other side. Thanks and take care.